that tree goes, what's happening? So it's here, it's now, it's game day. We're home for this one, we're off to the hive. It's Barnet v Malcolm. Now normally this is where I would have thrown in a joke about Malcolm, but we need to crack on straight with business because a lot has happened with our club since our last game. So now you know we sit rock bottom of the football league, three points below Forest Green, who are one place above us in 23rd. So since our last game, our assistant manager, Alex Armstrong, has been giving his marching orders and now collects his P45 and will be spending his Christmas down the job centre. Mark McGee is still with us, but he has said a shake-up is coming regarding backroom staff. I just hope he has a shake-up himself and bins the 4 3, 3 So from the 1st of January, it will cost you six quid. Yes, a whole six quid. That's a 20% increase. Basically, it means we've gone up by a pound to park your car safely in the Barnet's car park, right next to the Grand. Or you could just park around Cannon's tube station where it's free and have a five-minute walk to the ground. Choice is yours. Pick one. I don't think there was a better time to do it, personally. You're playing shit. You're bottom of the football league. You've just binned your assistant manager. I know, I'll raise prices. Genius! But they have just gave us a prize freeze for 2018. Every silver lining and all, I guess. Anyway, that's enough for chatting bollocks. Let's get into the football news. So Morgan finished 18th last season. Played 46, won 14, drew 10, lost 22. Scored 53, conceding 73, with a goal difference of minus 20, and ended on 52 points. Now, Morgan currently currently sit 18th now. A lot's changed in a season, I guess. And the last five games have been two wins, two draws, and one loss. With Morgan winning their last game against Coventry. Let's not even talk about our form. You already know we're bottom of the football league, so I'm just going to crack on. So Jim Bentley is the man in charge of the Shrimps, and has been since May the 13th, 2011. Just one day before my birthday. Giving you a heads up now, so you can all buy me a present. May the 12th, don't forget it. Now he's taken a total of 337 games. Winning 103 drawing 88 and losing 146, giving him a win percentage of 30.6. Jim also used to play for the Seasiders as well. Between 2002 and 2011, he racked up 298 games, scoring 29 times. Now, Morecambe's danger men are number 11, Kevin Ellison, who at 38 is joint league top goalscorer for Morecambe so far this season, with 4 in 17. And he also finished top goalscorer for Morecambe as well last season season with eight and three assists in 45. Now he's been with Morecambe since 2011, scoring 68 times in 256 games. Their other danger men are number 28, Adam McGurk, who is also joint top goal scorer so far with Morecambe this season. That's how it works when you, you joint top. Not kind of joint you're thinking of, Foxy. Anyway, Adam has four goals, but he's got it in 14 games. Number eight, Andrew Fleming. Number 15, Aaron Wildig. And captain, number 24, Michael Rose. All lead the way with same amount of assists. They're all on two. Rose has got it in 18 games. Fleming and Will Dig have it in 17. Now the last meeting between the Bees and the Shrimps was back in February of 2017. Tom Champion with the only goal on the 65th minute, giving Barnet all three points. You remember him again, like last time with Sam Togwell. He's the other ball winning midfielder that we released and never replaced. The last time we played Morecambe at home was only last season. It ended in a 2-2 with John Akindi getting both goals for Barnet. So let's re Wind all the way back to 2013 when Barnett last beat Morecambe at home. It ended in a 4-1 victory to the Bees, Luke Gambin getting one, and Danny Lopez with an hat-trick. So with only four games left of this year, I'm about 15 away from hitting a 1,000 subscribers. Come on, people. You know you can do it. Help me out here. Anyway, let's get to the ground and let's get some team news in. So team news is in. There's no formation, so I'm guessing this is a 4-4-2 looking at the players. I really hope it ain't a 4-3-3. Stevens in goal. I'm guessing it's Clough right back, Blackman at left back, Nelson and Santos as the centre halves, Ryan Watson maybe right wing, Campbell Rice on the left hand side, Valetti and Jack Taylor centre mid, John Akindi and Shaq Cole first up front. Let's get inside the ground. <laughs> So we're almost 15 in and it's still nil-nil. Morecambe's had the better of the chance out of us. Shot straight down the throat, James Stevens, he cleared it. For that, we had a free kick that led to a corner. Don't know how we didn't score from it. It was a scramble, but they cleared their lines. Still nil-nil, pretty even. Maybe Barnet edging at the moment, just possession-wise. But we've seen it before. All of us on top all the time, then they get a goal down the other end. Oh! 
Almost 20 minutes gone, a nice shot from Jack, about 15 yards out, it's going top corner, somehow the keeper's got rid of that, still nil-nil. Two quick chances from Morecambe right after each other, about 22 played. Again, dancing for our midfield, we can count ourselves lucky there, but how many times are we going to allow it to happen? Bang on half hour, it's Barnett's one, Morecambe nil. What a fucking goal by Campbell White. Easily 35 yards out, top right hand corner, the keeper had no chance. We was a little bit under pressure, but we broke down play, played it through the Shaq. Shaq's hold up play very well. Campbell White stand his left hand side, he's sprinted forward and he's just gone bang. Have it. And I tell you what, that dipped at the last second of win in. 1 0 Barnet. But we need a second one. We always need that second one. Come on, Barnet. Jack? Yes! yes! We're going to win the league! <laughs> oh, yes! 2 0 Barnet. Again, we were under pressure. We broke down the play. We got them on the counter attack. John Akindi, brilliant hold up play. Feeds through Jack. We're going to win the league! He feeds through Jack Tate who slots in bottom corner. 2 0 Barnet, come on! Quite to half time and it's still Barnet 2, Morecambe 0. It could have been a totally different game if Morecambe took their chances. We did ride our luck a little bit, but we are winning. So it's half time and it's Barnet 2, Morecambe 0. We can count ourselves lucky that Morecambe didn't take their chances. A brilliant goal by Campbell Rice. Another great hold up play by Johnny Kindy to put Jack Taylor through and we're tuning up. And we've seen it time and time again where we haven't taken our chances and other teams have so now it's the other way around and it's good to see but if Morecambe have taken their chances it could have been a totally different game right now we're not bottom of the league we are one place above it in 23rd that final ball has been shocking the worst thing that can happen to us in the second half is if we sit back because you're 2-0 down you're away from home you're chasing a game Morecambe are going to come at us so it's either we're going to cut them open and hit them on the counter or they're going to get a goal back two minutes into the second half we're still winning 2-0 just a little bit confusing in the box there it could have been an own goal. It's bounced and hit the bar and went out for a goal kick. But that's the problem. They just made two subs. Because the worst thing that we can do is take our foot off the gas. 67 minutes played. Barnett have just been given a penalty. Johnny Kinney's just been brought down. Before that, he literally had a one-on-one -on -one with a keep. But the keep made himself nice and big. And it went out wide. And again, a couple of corners from us haven't come with anything. Johnny Kinney's to take. Can he make it 3-0 for Barnett? Come on, John. Make sure. Blazed it over the bar. Fucking hell. That might come out of bites in the arse of Barnet. Two. Morecambe, one. In all fairness, it's a very good goal by their number 10. Campbell. Stevens got fingertips to it, but it was just too much. It went top corner. Two on Barnet. Oh, fuck's sake! Again. One on one with a keeper, John Kindy, and he hits the keeper's legs. Come on. We need to put this game to bed. Oh! Almost into the last 10. Jack Taylor has the shot just outside the box. Keeper palms it wide. It lands to Dan Sweeney. He takes a touch, cuts in, has a shot, drags it wide. Anyone at that back post will be tapping. Now into the last five, and this is the ultimate danger zone where we love to concede last minute goals. Literally the last 10, 15. Morgan have just been coming at us, and we're not controlling the game at all. They've had a couple of quick chances, and literally, as I'm saying that, Campbell just put another ball in. Gone for a shot cross, pretty much how he scored his goal. Just went wide of the bar. Again, it's like we're watching the game just fade away past us. Five minutes to go, can we hold out? 90th minute, plus four. I have no confidence. I, this whole second half has been horrible to watch. It really has. I've not enjoyed this second half football at all. So the game finished, Barnet 2, Morecambe 1. What a relief. Just what a relief it is to get a win. We did not play well and it was not enjoyable to watch that second half. But I guess you could argue we've done our damage in the first half compared to where normally it's the other way around. Teams do their damage against us in the first half and kind of slip in the second and it looks like we're coming back into it. And it kind of looked like that against Morecambe. We've done our damage in the first half. We should have killed the game off a bit more. And then Morecambe made a couple of changes and they could have come 
come back with an equaliser. But we've done a job. What we need to do now, though, we need to focus and get back to the hard work. Let's enjoy this win, but the hard work starts again tomorrow because if we lose next week at home to Cheltenham, this win means fuck all, and we're back to square one. It's sheer relief because we're now out of the bottom two. Only on goal difference, but still, we're out of the bottom two, and that's just a brilliant sight to see at the moment. As much as I love the big man, John Akindi is so frustrating to watch. He should have had an at trick, and how is he blazed a penalty over the bar and he's not worked the keeper? To be honest with you, every time I've seen him step up and take a penalty, he's never looked confident for me. Sometimes he just P-rolls it into the net and I just wonder how we scored from it. But there was still times where we was quite vulnerable a few times in the first half and in that second half, especially when Malkin were dancing through our midfield and our defence. And comes as, I don't know if we're switching off or we're too afraid to throw a tackle in. When Malkin made their subs, they looked a bit more lively and there's a bit more pace about them in the game. And they managed to pull one back. Looking at it, could Stevens done a bit better? I don't know. I personally think that the goal was just sheer perfect. So it's a bit more of an upbeat vlog than me just screaming my nuts off. This will mean nothing if we lose against Cheltenham. Three games left of this year. Cheltenham at home, away to Cambridge, and then away to Exeter. So don't forget to like, subscribe, leave any comments below. Follow me on Twitter. It's in the description. Make sure you share this video because Christmas is around the corner and I need that money. I'm skin. I've not even started my Christmas shopping yet. So until next time, I'll see you later.